Hello everyone, Dean here. Today we're going to do some cool stuff with AI. All right, you heard the man. Today we're going to do some cool stuff with AI. What we're doing today is we're hooking up a Rails application with a chat input. This is then going to fire off to 11 Labs, where I have created an instance of my own voice. If you set up, I think it's like a creator subscription, it's like 11 bucks a month or 20 bucks a month, something like that. You can then record your own voice uh, and then have it uh, sort of used as a profile. You can then tweak those profile settings to generate audio for it. Now this is all done in the GUI, similar to like chat GPT, but there is also an API reference and it all runs off of your same quota. So here I have like 100,000 uh, characters that I can use, which is like, I think probably two hours worth of audio recording, something like that. Um, but you can see like, you know, if you have a prompt like this, this is maybe going to burn through 50 characters or something. So it's like consistent audio recordings, right? But we have this API, it has a whole bunch of endpoints. And after you like create your, your voice, you can then come over here and you can get like a sample uh, request that you can then fire off. And we're doing all of that through Rails. So I'm just going to walk you through this. And we'll take a look at sort of how to do this. So to get started, we're going to go ahead and we're going to stop the server. I'm going to zoom in like 800 times so you can actually read stuff. We're going to CD out of here and then we're going to do a Rails new video. And because I'm running the Rails 7.1 release candidate, I'm going to do a dash J for bun and a dash C for tailwind. But of course, you're free to do whatever you would like here. While that's running, you can head over to 11labs.io to create an account. Once you have an account, you can then, uh, you know, play around with it for a bit. Maybe click on add voice, uh, do one of these uh, generate things. You can do like the instant voice cloning, enter your name, upload a couple audio files. I think it's like you probably want to upload like maybe two one minute files. That seems to be the sweet spot. Give it a brief description. Make sure you're only using your own voice. Don't use like, you know, Peter Griffin from Family Guy's voice or whatever. Uh, it's kind of cringe to steal people's, uh, you know, stuff like that. Uh, but once you have something that's up and running and you have like your use case, uh, you can then go ahead and click use on this, which will then allow you to tweak some stuff. You can go into like voice settings or whatever. Once you have the settings here that you're comfortable with, you can then go ahead and I think it's a go over to, I want to say profile. And once you go over to profile, you can then see this API key. If you click the little eyeball symbol, you'll get an API key here. And then you can go ahead and use that. Once you have that API key, we can then come over here do a uh, CD into our video project, and then we can do a code dot to open this up. And then we'll just go ahead and we'll edit the API key in real quick. I've gone ahead, I've copied the API key. We can then do a editor equals code dot space dash dash wait, uh, rails credentials colon edit. Go ahead and open this up. We can then pretty much name this whatever we would like. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and check out what I have it set to in my other project. So I think what I called it was the XI underscore API underscore key, because that's what it's called in the uh, documentation. And then you can go ahead and just paste in that key and then close this. Once you close it, you'll see that it's been encrypted and saved. And at that point, you're pretty much good to go. So let's go ahead and let's think about how we want to do this. In the demo application, we had a home page with a couple of these things being displayed. So let's do a Rails G controller pages home to generate our home page. We then want to generate a audio model for us. So let's start by just doing a rails active underscore storage colon install to generate our active storage migrations. And then let's do a rails G model for, I don't know, like an audio. We'll give each audio a uh, previous prompt of type text. So that's just like whatever we type in here, we'll just save so that we can later display it so we can see what each audio file corresponds to. And then we can give it a file of type attachment, which I recently learned about from Chris at GoRails. Uh, we'll actually create in your model, if you go over to your models and your audio, uh, it'll set up the has one attached for you. So that's just a neat little trick that I learned. So now we have the controller and the model. What we want to do now is a Rails G job, and we're actually going to call this the text to speech job. And the reason why we're doing this specifically is because uh, when we have our controller in like our pages controller, because I'm going to make some ugly code here where everything just runs through the pages controller, when it fires off to the 11 labs API, we don't want it to sit there and just wait for a response because, you know, the API could take five seconds to generate one of these audio files or the website could go down or whatever. And then you're just stuck waiting for the page to refresh. So instead, we're going to fire off this job. This job in the background is going to go to the API. Once it gets a response, it's then going to create the audio model. 
once it creates the audio model in the audio model will then come down here and we'll say like after create uh, do a turbo broadcast to the page just something simple like that now in this case I don't have any session set up so this will be broadcast to everyone uh, but you could of course set it so that you know the the user is the only one to get it based on where your turbo streaming from so let's go ahead and let's pop into our views, our pages, and our homepage, and let's just go through this step by step, right? So the first, the absolute first thing that we want to do is just real quick set up that turbo stream from. So I'm going to go ahead. And I'm going to get rid of uh, the pages home stuff. I'm just going to say turbo stream from the audio stream. So that's going to be our channel. We're just going to be using that so that we can uh, stream from this. We're then going to go ahead and do a render for the audio form. After we have the render for the audio form, we'll do a BR just because I was lazy with my styling. And then we can do an H2 to say, this is where we're gonna put our previous responses. Then we'll have our audio container and we'll come down here and we'll close this. This is just so that we have like the basic structure here. We can now do a bin slash dev to start the server. It'll tell me foreman's not found. So I'll do a gem install foreman, just like that. And then I'll do a bin slash dev again. And then hopefully this will work. We can then come over here and refresh the page. And we'll get it into an error because we don't have our migrations run yet, but we can just click this button or we can type rails db colon migrate. And then, oops, then we go to the home page here. So let's come into our routes.rb. So this is over here in the config routes.rb file. And in our routes, we actually have to set up a couple things. We're gonna do a route to the pages controller home action. Pretty standard stuff there, probably seen it a million times. We're also gonna do a post to the TTS uh, and the reason why I just called this TTS is because like I was going back and forth on what this action could actually be called. And to me, it just made sense to go with, uh, you know, like text to speech as the prompt, uh, mostly because like there's, I'm, I'm like going back and forth on this because I want to use like chat GPT or open AI in a future video where you then like have uh, open AI uh, return a response and then you send that off to the text to speech. So like at first I was like, it's like the prompt service or it's just like the chat thing. And I was like, you know, this actually makes more sense as the text to speech. Uh, and then we'll have like a separate prompt where we can go over to open AI in like a future video. So for now, I think this makes the most sense. So we'll just leave this as a TTS path. Uh, and then we can come back over here and we can come into our form, uh, which is this audio slash form. So let's go ahead and let's create that. We'll come over to reviews, right click, new folder, call this audio. And then in our audio, we'll also have a underscore form.html.erb file. So because we're using um, Tailwind, we're gonna have quite a few classes here. Uh, you can pretty much ignore the classes. It really depends on what you wanna do. Uh, in my case, I, I just have like basic formatting so that stuff kind of like doesn't sit on the edge of the screen. The only thing you want here to make sure of is the ID of an audio form because chances are if I have an ID somewhere, you're gonna wanna make sure you have the same thing or at least that you're consistently using those. We'll then give this a header that says, hey, you might want to record a new response here. And then we'll give a form width that just says, go to the TTS path that we just created with a method of post. We can then go ahead and give this a margin bottom of four. And we can then close this div right here. Next, we're going to do the text area tag. Now this one, I, this is why I always hate doing Tailwind in videos. Uh, this goes over into a different zip code. I'm going to full screen this. The code will be available in the video description under the sources link. Uh, that's usually where I post the source code. Uh, but here is the entire class for this uh, text input. We give it a placeholder, we give it columns and rows, we pass in nil, and we just say this is your prompt. And this is effectively it for uh, most of our form here. The only thing we have to do now is just create that cool little blue submit button that says generate voice. So let's go ahead and let's save this. Let's come over here and let's refresh. So now we have the form. This seems fine, but of course it's not gonna do anything. So if I type in ASDF and click generate, nothing will happen. We'll just get some errors in the console because we don't have this action yet. So let's come over to our pages controller. And in our pages controller, let's start by creating our at audios on the homepage. Just do an audio.all and then ordered by created at descending. Pretty standard stuff there. We can then go ahead and create our TTS uh, action. Then uh, we pretty much only have to do one more thing. So in this case, what we want to do is say something like a private. We can then do a def audio params just like that. And here you can either require audio or you can just do something like permit a uh, parameter. I think of prompt is what we had. So we just want to permit a prompt. And then in here we can just do a text to speech job where we do a perform form later with the uh, audio params of the prompt. We just pass that in. After we do that, we can then do a redirect to the root path 
with a notice that says uh, audio is being generated or whatever. So that's good. Uh, we actually don't need to say uh, refresh the page. So we'll just leave it like this. Please wait a few minutes. So that's fine. Then what you can do is you can just set up these notices however you want to. But for now, this is going to be fine. So this sets this up. The only thing we have to do now is come into our jobs and our text to speech job. We're also going to want to stop our server and just real quick do a bundle add for the Faraday gem. Just add that to our gem file. That'll run the bundle install as well. We can then hit control L as soon as this is done and do a bin slash dev to start our server again. The Faraday gem is just going to allow us to do our API requests. It makes it a lot easier. Let's change this from args to just taking in the prompt. And then we have to get our endpoint here. And this is a little bit confusing. The documentation here uh, makes it a little bit hard, but uh, not un undoable, right? We're going to do a faraday.post to https colon slash slash api dot 11 labs dot io slash v1 slash text to speech. Now this is going to match up with the API over here for the text to speech post request right here. That's right here, but you see this voice ID. Now this voice ID you actually get either by scrolling through their entire list of voices, uh, and you can find that link somewhere, I don't quite recall, or you can come over to wherever your voices are. If you want to use a custom voice, you have this little lightning bolt. If you click on that, you can actually get the voice ID from here. So that's just something to be aware of just a, a way to grab that voice ID. So we can then come in here, we can paste in that voice ID, and that'll let us use this. Now what we can do is we can say, all right, we have to set up all the request uh, headers to match what the API has. So over here, it has like a accept header of audio.mpeg or audio slash mpeg, the API key, the content type, and then the data right here as well. So we're just gonna match this to whatever we want. Now, in my case, I actually have GitHub Copilot. So the way that I do these is I just come up above my response. I paste in the entire expected uh, you know, request. I comment it out and then I just come in here and I just wait for GitHub Copilot to figure out what it needs to do. And like nine times out of 10, it's pretty close. So the API key, I don't know where it's getting this one from. Um, that's always a little weird when it, when it tries to guess an API key. Uh, but we can just go ahead and do a Rails application credentials and then grab our API key. We then have our content type of application slash JSON. We have our accept of audio uh, slash MPEG. We then have our request body with the text of the prompt that we passed in. We're using the 11 monolingual V1. And then we have our voice settings. And these are gonna be the stability and whatever are gonna correspond to when you click on this and you go into voice settings here, uh, these right here. So the stability, uh, each of them has like a on hover where you can sort of see what happens. So this one's going to allow you to be more expressive. This one's going to be for um, like more artifacts in the background. And then the uh, the exaggerated style is more along the lines of uh, how do you how do you say this? What I think of this is like I had a really good example earlier. I don't have any more, but like I, I had a voice crack from the AI where it's voice fakes a crack while it's working around with it. But basically the best way to do these is just kind of take one, crank it up to something ridiculous, and then just see what the result is, and then kind of go from there. In my case, I'm just gonna go with like the default settings here, and then I'm gonna say to JSON. Now we're gonna do a little bit of ugly code, just because uh, what, what I'm doing here is kind of just throwing it all into one job. It's all in one method, not really the cleanest thing, but we're going to do this for our response. We'll get a response back. We're then going to create our blob with active storage blob create. We pass in the response.body. We give it a file name of audio.mp3. We give it a content type. And then after we do that, we're then going to fire off our audio.create down here, which is going to happen uh, inside of our method. We do an audio.create pass in the prompt and the file of blob. Now the prompt colon is just gonna grab the literal prompt variable. So that's why it can just kind of not uh, pass in, you know, like prompt colon prompt. It's just the same thing and my formatter likes that better. So we'll just stick with that. We can then come into our audio.rb and this is gonna be the final stretch, I guess. We're gonna say after we create a audio uh, model record thing, let's do a broadcast. We can do our broadcast right here. And we're gonna broadcast a prepend to the uh, audio dash stream that we set up earlier in our home page. So we have this uh, audio stream right here, audio dash stream. We're doing that stream channel. We're targeting the audio container, which is this div with an ID of audio container. We're passing in a partial of audio slash audio container that we still have to create. And then we're passing in the locals of the audio uh, file or the audio model itself. 
as well as an autoplay of true. So when this gets appended to the page, it'll autoplay. But in our home here, we want to set this up so it won't autoplay, which is why we're passing it in instead of just you know manually setting it in our audio form. So let's go ahead and let's loop through all of our ad audios. We set these up in our pages controller index action earlier, just to remember or to remind you. And we can go ahead and we can end these right here. Let's tab these over. And then in here, what we want to do is basically what we do in the model, uh, just a little bit differently. We're going to say this has an autoplay of false and a audio of audio. So this is why we're setting, or this is where we're setting it to false instead. So it'll loop through all of these and then it won't play them all at the same time when you first load the page. We'll go ahead, we'll save the audio file as well. And then let's go ahead and let's create this audio container. So let's come into audio, new file, underscore audio, underscore container, dot HTML, dot ERB. And then in our audio container, we're just gonna do something like this. We give it a class of audio container. We give it a response number of the audio ID. We give it the prompt itself so we can see what the prompt was. And then we render the partial for audio slash audio that we still have to make. We pass in the locals of an audio and the autoplay variable that we passed in. Because at this point, it's either set to true in the model or false from the home page. So we're just passing that variable along. And then we'll just do one more where we just say audio.html.erb or sorry, underscore audio.html.erb. And then in here, what we wanna do is just set our audio tag to have a URL for with controls of true and autoplay of whatever the autoplay variable was. And then we only wanna do this if there's an audio file attached or if there's a file attached to this audio uh, record. And then we'll go ahead and we'll save all this. Let's come over to our homepage, refresh, and then let's paste in some text here. So let's just come over to I don't know, like right here, let's copy this line of text, let's paste it in. So unleash the power of our cutting edge technology, blah, 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 let's click generate voice. Down here, we'll see some stuff happen. Unleash the power of our cutting edge technology to generate realistic, captivating speech in a wide range of languages. So yeah, that's just based off of like two minutes worth of audio recordings that I submitted to uh, the 11 labs. And if you need something to read for your audio recordings on 11 labs, I actually just went to chat GPT and I just asked it to generate me a couple of paragraphs that I could use to train a audio AI or model, whatever. But yeah, that's basically going to do it for this video. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed and hopefully I'll see you in the next one where I hook it up to chat GPT somehow and create an even bigger monstrosity.